Welcome, boils and ghouls. This is the first episode in a series of episodes of the Ouija board. Today, we delve into the spine-chilling history of the Ouija board, a tool that has both fascinated and terrified people for generations. Grab a seat, turn down the lights, and let's unlock the secrets behind the Ouija board. Our journey begins in the late 19th century, a time when spiritualism was in vogue. The Ouija board emerged as a parlour game, claimed to connect to the living and the spirit world. Its origin story is shrouded in mystery, with conflicted tales of its invention. Some say it was a combination of ancient divination practices, while others attribute it to the creative minds of Elijah Bond and Charles Kennard. The Ouija board's eerie reputation didn't go unnoticed by Hollywood. In the realm of cinema, it has been featured as an antagonist in several spine-chilling films. Classics like The Exorcist and The Witch Board. And they have immortalised the Ouija board as a conduit for the supernatural horror. Now, we explore the darker side of the Ouija board lore. Urban legends abound regarding tragic incidents linked to these mystical boards. Tales of people meeting untimely ends after tampering with this supernatural Tales of people meeting Tales of people meeting untimely ends after tampering with the supernatural are chillingly passed down through generations. While many are mere folklore, some claim that unresolved spirits were responsible for fatal outcomes. Celebrities too have been drawn into the mystique of the Ouija board. Stories circulate about famous figures seeking guidance or communicating with otherworldly entities. From renowned musicians to actors, the allure of the Ouija board has transcended the boundaries of the ordinary. If we move across the globe, it's also noteworthy that in some countries have taken a stance against the Ouija board, citing concerns about spiritual and psychological risks. Certain nations have banned or heavily regulated the uses of Ouija boards. The reasons behind these prohibitions delve into cultural, religious and societal beliefs. And if, and if this introduction to the Ouija board isn't enough, I will now tell you the tale of my very own Ouija board experience. The Halloween Ouija board horror that haunted us for years. It was October 31st, 1998. Halloween. My parents had left me alone for the first time, as a 17 year old with one single rule, no parties. But naturally, being a teenage lad, that's exactly what I did. I couldn't resist the temptation and organised a small gathering of friends. Halloween with horror movies, alcohol, cigarettes. What could go wrong? Whilst watching, Horror movies, we moved on to telling ghost stories with somebody regaling a tale of a Ouija board gone horribly wrong with five people apparently lost their lives to a car accident that, that was predicted by the Ouija board. Once the story, which was clearly made up, ended, somebody said, we should do a Ouija board. There was only one problem. We didn't have a Ouija board. Ouija boards in 1998 weren't easy to come by in the UK. They were not available in shops. So we did what a lot of people did, and we created our own on the back of a Monopoly board. The planchette was just a whiskey tumbler. So as we moved to the dining room and sat around our make makeshift Ouija board on the set on the dining table, we decided to make things more scary we drew a pentagram in the centre of the board. Yes, no, the letters of the alphabet and numbers 1 to 9 and then 0 at the end. And then good and evil, just for good measure. Then we delved into the supernatural. We lit candles. We turned on a small guitar amp with no guitar plugged into it to get some background noise and static. So, laughter ensued. The glass didn't move. And then somebody says, you have to call out properly. And then said the following words. To all spirits in the surrounding area, if you would like to communicate with us, please move the glass. And then the glass moved. There were a few gasps, 
and then laughter. And then things took an unsettling turn. At first, the planchet after the initial movement remained still. But after the incantation for the second time, it started moving. Initially, we dismissed this as our own pranks to each other, as all we were getting were insults to each other. But then the atmosphere shifted when the board revealed information about what was hidden under the stairs of my friend's auntie's house. A detail that none of us should have known. Perhaps we, one of us did. Tension started to escalate, and one person that refused to have any direct contact with the planchette or the board asked a personal question from the side of the room about his recently deceased father, and the board responded, and the board responded accurately, sending shivers through us all, and panic sets in as insults, death dates, were all spelt out on the board. It was like an inexplicable force intensified around us like something was pushing the glass. And terror reached its peak when the lad sat to the side of the table that had refused to have anything to do with the board started screaming at the board to stop. And then something happened that none of us will ever forget. There was the sound of a flick on the side of the glass. The glass seemingly spun from under our fingers flipping up the right way with force shot across the room heading towards the teenager screaming at it and then burst in midair. Glass showered all over the room. We all ran, terrified. We fleed to the living room, closing the, the dining room door behind us. And when we turned to look, we were confronted by a shadow moving across the glass of the dining room door. What seemed like a supernatural presence, in fact, turned out to be a concerned neighbour investigating the commotion. We left the house and following the neighbour's advice because she'd seen what had happened, we burned the Ouija board. She told us of her own experience and said the way to get rid of everything is to burn the board. We cleaned up the shattered glass, we set fire to the Ouija board in the garden and then threw it over the wall into some waste ground. However, in the following months and years, the horror persisted, although it slowly waned away. Strange occurrences haunted us. Even the sceptic among us that found the entire thing funny on the night began experiencing odd shadows and movements at home, and the anticipated death day spelled up by the Ouija board approached, then nothing happened. So, because of this, some of us grew less fearful. Others of us couldn't shake the lingering unease. The tale of that Halloween night continues to echo in our memories. The sound of the glass on wood and the occasional glimpse of inexplicable shadows still send shivers down our spines, reminding us of the night we thought we contacted the dead. The Halloween Ouija board horror became an indelible part of our shared history. A chilling reminder that some stories, once unleashed, refuse to be forgotten. And it is this story that has prompted me, as a content creator, to now start experiments with the Ouija board. Experiments with paranormal investigators, non-believers, and believers alike. So join us in the next few episodes where I conduct experiments with the Ouija board. Will I ever come into contact with the spirit that once scared me for years and years of my life? If you have enjoyed this very different video from me, please hit the like button, leave your comments down below, and please share the video. And let me know if you are actually looking forward to the Ouija board experiments that I'm about to conduct over the coming months. Much love, Beardo out.